Hugging Face releases a course, you can now play GTA inside of an AI's mind, and Spot turns 1. Welcome to ML News. Good evening. Hugging Face, the famous NLP startup, releases a course that teaches you how to use their models, libraries, and other code they release. This goes from introduction of how to use transformers and what transformers are, how to fine tune them, to the diving in area about the datasets and tokenizers library, up to advanced things like speeding up training and training your custom training loop. Of course, the course is highly integrated with the Hugging Face face ecosystem, but it requires quite little and it seems like a good place. If you don't know a lot, but you know how to program, you can get into deep learning and specifically NLP pretty easily with that course. So the course consists of videos, collabs, code demonstrations, and so on. This should be specifically interesting for practitioners or data scientists that know a little bit about machine learning, but really want to get into the applications of retrained NLP models, maybe you want to find tune them a little bit. Give it a try, check it out. It's up there for free. Next up, the popular YouTuber Sendex releases a GTA version that is played entirely in the mind of a neural network. All the environment you see is entirely generated by a neural network that responds to your action. The network has been trained by random agents driving around on this stretch of road, so you can't actually go further than this. To run the demo, you do need a GPU that is CUDA capable, though the code is available and you're probably very free to extend this to also work on CPU and extend the level beyond this stretch of road. Through all of this experience, the neural network actually learns something about the physics of the game itself, even though you never teach it physics. So go check out the demo if you can, check out the code, give the video a watch and a like. I'll provide the links to the GitHub in the description of this video and you're able to take it from there. Next up, Facebook is testing AI to get you to stop fighting in its groups, CNN Business writes. Apparently, Facebook is introducing new moderator tools for group admins that get notified whenever there is a conflict argument happening in their groups. This allows them to go in and limit how often users can post or maybe block some users in order to de-escalate the conflict. I love the examples they give here, <laughs> going like, lol, what? Shut up, you're so dumb. Stop talking about organic food, you idiot. <laughs> Idiots, if this nonsense keeps happening, I'm leaving the group. I mean, I get they can't show the worst arguments happening on Facebook in their product demo. It's still kind of fun. Now, of course, this is not the first time that moderation tools are used or that AI is supposed to help moderation. You can always be a bit skeptical about AI regulating speech somewhere. As long as this is just used to send notifications to moderators, it's uh, one thing. If this is also used then to automatically moderate content, I would be a little more skeptical. Also, the bigger problem with these things, I think, is always the conflict between are we simply detecting toxicity and conflicting opinions or are we detecting opinions that we don't like. Now today's social media giants have a bit of a tendency to be in that second category and that's something that I would advise strongly against. However, there is an easier way to moderate toxicity on Facebook. If you don't want to get into toxic arguments on Facebook, I suggest you just don't use Facebook. No one else does. You're welcome. You know, on this uh, show, which is an irregular show, we do get our fair share of comments and feedback and thank you all so much for that. Some are though just a little bit silly, like this one. Though now that I think about it... Receive an input that strong gradient from the north. In this area, huge ashes. And uh, in this, this little piece, high high accuracy. So take your time, train efficiently, and, uh, you know, avoid huge saddles. Huge saddles are bad for you. Also, don't, don't take your kids to saddle points. They're dangerous. Dangerous for you. 
and your family. For me, it's all. And uh, now the word to Yanni. All right, the Washington Post writes, an autonomous ship's first effort to cross the Atlantic shows the difficulty of the experiment. Apparently, there is a ship called the Mayflower 400 that is built by a British company and is supposed to cross the Atlantic Ocean in a purely autonomous fashion. Now, I'm not sure how much of this is technically AI, as it seems to be mostly a lot of control theory and classic robotics, but it is an autonomous vehicle, so... Pretty cool at that. So the applications of autonomous ships are going to be, according to this article, going and measuring some chemical composition of faraway ocean lands, ocean waters, generally doing reconnaissance and listening to whale sounds. And surely there are no other applications for this. Not at all. Can't strap anything to it, then you can then... However, there is a problem in that the ship had a technical difficulty and had to return to shore. So the actual crossing of the Atlantic will have to wait for another couple of weeks, it seems. Now, there is a website where you can track in real time what the ship is doing. So as you can see right here, this is the route the ship was supposed to take with a few historical landmarks of when famous other ships sank and the target is in Massachusetts. Now, what you can also see is the path that the actual ship took until now. So it is still apparently out in the ocean somewhere. And you can see the point where it had to turn around, but <laughs> it seems like it had some problems already before. What exactly happened here? Dotted line is the course, and it just kind of decided to get away from it. And then, of course, here it had to turn around due to the technical difficulties. However, once it turned around, it just decided to go into a couple of formations just for giggles, I guess. So is it now still going to America or is it returning to shore? No one knows. It seems like our long term goal of building self deciding AI has finally succeeded and the AI just decides to stay in the water for a little bit longer. All right, next news, PyTorch releases the 1.9 release. Among other things, it migrates some of previously experimental libraries to stable, such as torch.linalg and complex autograd. Specifically, torch.linalg is supposed to replicate whatever numpy.linalg has in it and bring this to PyTorch tensors. This should enable a lot more easy applications of classic linear algebra routines in PyTorch storage natively. Another big improvement is the mobile interpreter of PyTorch, which makes it possible to reduce binaries that you ship to mobile devices by up to 75% for typical applications. So if you want to get into mobile development with PyTorch, now is a good time to check out the new 1.9 release. There are also a lot of other improvements, for example, updates to the PyTorch RPC framework that allows you to send data around between between distributed workers. So check it out, give it a try, let's go on. All right, ZDNet writes, I just watched McDonald's new AI drive through and I've lost my appetite. So apparently this TikTok by user Soupmaster2000 is going around showing what the new automated drive through machines at McDonald's are capable of. Welcome to McDonald's. We're currently serving a limited menu. So please review the menu before ordering. Let me know what I can get for you. Can I get two medium Oreo McFlurries? All right, would you like anything else? That's it. Okay, your total will be 658. Please go forward. Now people are calling this robot a bit dystopian or whatnot. As Edinet here writes, the voice is exactly the same robot voice you've heard in every disturbing sci-fi movie. It's as if Siri's daughter has just got her first job. Welcome to McDonald's. It reminds me of uh, GLaDOS in, in Portal. So instead of this feeling dystopian, I get a bit of a warm feeling in my heart. But as you can see, like the recognition of speech works just fine. And that's honestly all I want from an ordering robot. I don't want it to give me heartwarming emotions or anything like this. I'm just fine with that. But it kind of shows you how hard it is to actually make a human interaction AI work. 
And it seems like the more human you make it, the less people are forgiving of mistakes. No one bothers if a automated train voice takes a little too long to announce the next station. But when it's supposed to be more human, people get freaked out if it's like just a little off. It's a very special phenomenon, but honestly, I'm not too bothered. Next news, CNBC writes, Artificial intelligence won't replace the role of financial advisors, UBS CEO says. <laughs> so apparently UBS CEO Ralph Hamer said, Artificial intelligence is better suited to handling day-to-day -day functions like opening an account or executing trades. So apparently he said that if it comes to these basic tasks, um, AI is better. And by AI, I guess he just means software. Where is AI in opening an account or executing a trade? So apparently the opinion here is that our financial advisors should be supported by the technology and their advisors, they should advise. So the advisors shouldn't take care of low level tasks such as opening accounts. Instead, they should be informed by the AI to make decisions. He also said UPS is looking to adopt a Netflix experience where clients can access a dashboard of different research and product. Like everybody wants dashboards. Why? Why? Like I get it, but nah. Technologies like AI can help financial advisors figure out the best way to serve clients, according to Hamers. If you ask me, this just sounds like an industry that's a bit in decline and a bit threatened by the general rise of digitalization and software and AI. So all the tasks he describes that AI is able to do is pretty much things that just software are able to do, while AI is going to actually replace these humans. So this kind of rests on the assumptions that you think we still want to be advised by those bankers. Now, if memory serves me right, didn't you just kind of recently advise everyone to buy into the housing markets and then not tell everyone that everything is full of crap until you sold your own stuff and then plunge the entire world into a big recession? Yeah, are you sure we want to be advised by those people? I think I'll take my chances with an AI any day. Thank you. All right, Jürgen Schmidhuber released a new blog post celebrating the 90th birthday of Kurt Gödel's 1931 paper, which he says laid the foundations of theoretical computer science and the theory of artificial intelligence. Now, whatever opinion of Schmidhuber you have, he is a pretty good historian and his blog posts are generally quite interesting to read. So it's pretty short and concise and filled with references that allow you to go deeper if you want to. I invite you to go check it out and read it up. Next news, Facebook releases Ogly, an oddly named data augmentation library to help build more robust AI models. Data augmentation is an important topic, especially in things like computer vision research, but the library allows you to go even beyond that into NLP data augmentation and others. So if you're doing anything that uses augmentations, I invite you to check out this library. All right, a team from MIT, the Allen Institute for AI and Microsoft Research have released a set of programming puzzles along with a paper. And there is a big GitHub repo filled with puzzles that are supposed to accelerate the research into AI coding. So AI that is able to solve coding problems. In these problems, the AI gets a piece of code which contains a function that it has to satisfy. And the rest is up to the imagination of whoever builds the algorithm. The cool thing about this approach is that it's pretty general. So the examples here contain things like Towers of Hanoi, finding optimal strategies for tic-tac-toe, shortest path problems, and even some open problems in computer science and mathematics. You can even contribute your own puzzles. And I think the repository is meant as sort of a collective effort to collect pieces of code that AI might be able to solve in the future or that AI is already able to solve. If you're into AI generated code and AI generated problem solutions, check out this repository and try yourself to come up with an AI that solves some of these problems. And last news, Spot turns one. Beloved machine dog and carrier of various military items, Boston Dynamics robot Spot turns one year old 
as deployed in the real world. So Boston Dynamics has released a little video of where Spot is used throughout the world. Now, of course, there are some pretty cool applications for this technology, like it can go into mines and check out dangerous areas. It can go into high voltage areas or into Chernobyl to measure radiation. And it seems like the applications of drones like these are pretty pretty numerous. It can save a lot of humans from doing either very tedious work or very dangerous work. Now of course this being produced by Boston Dynamics it displays the robot in the best possible light but with any technology there are good applications there are bad applications. I think it's cool that technology is being pushed forward and I'd rather have spot in this world than not. So this was it for this week's ML News. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. All right. All right.